Hey folks, Quilithian here, and welcome to another episode of our Let's Play of Rising Tide, the expansion for Sid Meier's Civilization Beyond Earth. And as a reminder, of course, this is a very early pre-release build. There's going to be a lot of things that not quite finished yet. And also, this commentary is a post-game commentary. It wasn't done live while I played because I was uh, doing this on site. So, looks like I am going ahead and settling a city over here by, uh, by Hutama, and he is not particularly happy about that. I do have to admit, that's a pretty nearby city, pretty trolley. I know it looked like I was settling on top of an expedition site, but you have to remember, of course, that uh, one of the glitches in this pre-release build is that those icons stay even after the uh, the expedition site's been expedited, or, or whatever the right term is. You can see here I'm doing some debate as to whether I should be building the Xenomath bathhouses, which I unlocked with, um, with that artifact. And it is very tempting, it's quite a lot of culture, but I think the reason I keep sort of popping to something else is because, um, while culture is still good for virtues, of course, um, with aquatic cities, your borders don't grow with culture, so it's like slightly less strong than it was. Obviously, virtues are still stupendously good, but there's a lot to be said about getting some extra production, for example, which I think is what I went for. It looks like a recycler, and I can't remember what the other one was, but something like that. We do have a social policy, or rather a virtue coming up here. There we go. We're working our way up to that, that important capstone ability, that important final virtue in the prosperity tree, which is the, is it what, 25% less unhealthiness, which is incredibly strong. It's one of the reasons that you go prosperity. It really allows you to get a lot more cities or grow them a lot bigger. Looks like I'm going relatively wide here. I've got another settler and, oh, looks like I am being, oh, I'm fine. Looked like, that was weird. Oh, that wasn't me. That's what was going on there. It's um, it's an enemy ship. It's someone else who's who's attacking aliens and being attacked by aliens. So I'm not sure where we're going to place this. We have decided to go Harmony. So grabbing the Float Stone is not a huge priority, although you can always trade it away, of course. And, of course, these days you can also look into getting uh, hybrid affinities. But I bet you I'm going to settle pretty much right where I am now. There's a lot of food resources nearby. Um, oh, maybe there. Ah, oh, we'll start next to, what is it called, the Brain Coral, and then probably move southwest from there after the fact. Uh, still pretty light on units, of course, we're playing on a relatively low difficulty, so I'm not feeling terribly concerned about that. Um, I do need some more trade ruins, what did I get here? Oh, free level in, uh, in an affinity. Is that what it said? I should get a pop-up for it. We got the cool little ring of awesome over here uh, showing you that, yeah, there are indeed hybrid affinities out there. Uh, no idea what all the abilities are yet. We haven't had a chance to look at those. Uh, again, I was trying to play relatively fast because I really wanted to try to complete a game in my day, so I didn't necessarily mouse over every single tooltip in these videos. And I'm sorry for everyone who, like, loves to just soak up all those details. There we go. We're going to grab some more Harmony. Just beeline up there, get some more upgrades for my units. Um, in particular, being a uh, naval like this, um, some of your naval unit upgrades do certainly come a lot later. I mean, obviously, the very first thing you get is the upgrade to your basic soldier, right? But your basic ship upgrades come a little bit later, so um, as Aquatic, it becomes very much more tempting to get those first, like, what, four or five affinity levels so that your basic Aquatic level units get updated. And then after that, they don't get updated again for a while, so there's a little bit less pressure. On the other hand, you do, of course, get your um, your inf your affinity bonus. Is that at level six? I think it's at level six. Might be five. I don't remember. Um, just slipping my mind here. So I'm very, oh, trade route. Yes, of course, always run your trade routes to your new outposts. One of my favorite things to do. Love that extra growth. We're actually going to have two outposts going on at the same time. Currently sitting at plus five health. As soon as those outposts grow into actual cities, that health will drop pretty dramatically. On the other hand, we are only, um, I guess it doesn't have the timer up there, but um, only a dozen or two turns from getting the next virtue, which will dramatically drop my own healthiness. And of course, I'm sure I can build many health-oriented buildings at this point. And there we go. Yes, run that over there. I can't remember in the last video, I think I set up the deal with Hutama so I can get plus three trade routes in my capital. Yeah, you can see here Deep Castle's at 304. So yes, please bring me up to 404. Hugely valuable. I'm really, really happy to be spending diplomatic capital on there. Although I will reiterate that I should really be purchasing some traits with the excess capital that I currently have sitting there. But again, didn't quite clue into that functionality properly so early on. The problem is I was having conversations with people the whole time. So so it's you're a little bit more distracted when that sort of thing goes on. 
Again, when I played a, a second game or part of a second game afterwards where I was just waiting for the uploads to go, then it was like, holy cow, these traits are amazing. I'm gonna prioritize these right away every time and drop a solar collector. This is actually a bit of a mistake here. I dropped the solar collector there because it would cover three like you know basic resources, which are tiles you're always going to work. So hey, get more energy there. However, you really want to get the solar collector to actually cover the tile your city is in because I believe it gives you what, like a plus 20%? And apparently uh, the Slavic Federation loves my, it said Hutama there, but it said Slavic Federation, I'm confused. Someone loves the fact that I'm heavy on production. But yeah, you get like something like a 20% boost to your energy if your city is covered in the radius of your satellite. So you always want to do that if at all possible. Looks like I'm going to prioritize a high energy. Nope, nope, going to send it to uh, Camp Cascade. Get the extra food maybe. Um, ooh, dig up an extra site. My explorers were really getting a lot of work done this game. Um, and again, that is, despite the fact that in the build I was playing in, there are no resource pods or I think expedition sites in the water itself. And I believe the actual release will have that. And I believe I was told that, um, they, in their internal build, they already had that feature. Just the build I was playing on didn't have that. But don't quote me on it. These things are always, of course, bound to change. Literally everything in this game is bound to change. Cutter here that looks like my naval melee unit. Plus one food from recyclers, I like that quite a bit. Although, what's the other one in recyclers? Plus 10% faster workers? There's a lot to be said for that, because if your workers are improving tiles faster, then in another sense, you sort of are getting, you know, more food. It might be worth more than plus one food. Here, it looks like I'm quickly buying my way up to that titanium over there. Make sure no one ninjas that. Uh, it looks like I've probably decided that Fajaran, or whatever that city is, uh, is probably not moving anymore. And um, that's one of the things I haven't quite figured out yet in these, like, how are we going to prioritize moving? How much are we going to pri prioritize moving the cities? Uh, some of the developers I was talking to said they move them a lot. And here I'm doing sort of lightweight, but I think, you know, my weight, my, my brain hasn't really um, caught up to the new paradigm. So whether moving your cities frequently is really important or not, I don't know. I mean, I like to build more buildings. So when you're build moving a city, of course, you're not building a building, but you do get a lot of extra tiles. I think I would prioritize trying to get a little bit more energy and then just buying more tiles. And luckily there's a couple of options to that in the sea. You've got, you still have the thorium reactor, but there's one other, they, the tidal turbine in there, which is another really high source of money. So you can buy more tiles. And I think I'm gonna enjoy that kind of gameplay a little bit more. One of the other things to consider is how much are we gonna consider um, prioritize being fully aquatic. Here, only one of my cities is up on land, and that may not be what we want to do. It's possible that, you know, you want to split it 50-50. Maybe more land is better than more sea. Obviously, I have an advantage in the sea being that I am playing the NSA. My uh, aquatic cities have bonus to defense above what the average aquatic city has, and in addition to that, I can move them around cheaper. But again, not, so far, I'm not moving them around that much. I suspect... I suspect that with a little bit more experience in Rising Tide, you're going to end up moving the cities quite a bit more and probably doing some interesting things with that kind of gameplay. Um, especially the idea that like you've improved some tiles and then you move a city away from it so you can plant a new city where those improved tiles are. It's kind of an interesting concept. Uh, it looks like the pack just created, finished the Stellar Codex. And I'm not currently prioritizing much in the way of wonders. I'm playing like I sort of do at the higher difficulties, assuming that uh, wonders are a little bit hard to get to. Which really isn't fair, and actually, that is even much less of an issue in Beyond Earth than it is in Civilization V, because in Beyond Earth, because of the tech web, it's a lot more viable for you to beeline a technology that unlocks a wonder, um, and have sort of free reign to it, because the AI might be wandering in completely different directions, or going for a more balanced tech up, that sort of thing, so um, it is a lot more viable to try to get wonders in Beyond Earth than Civ V, um, even at higher difficulties, and this is a relatively low difficulty, we're only... The save that the, they supplied me was set to uh, to Mercury, which is very low. But, you know, it's given me a chance to sort of just, you know, pick things that look kind of neat and not really worry too much about the, uh, the outcome. You can see, I'm hoping I mouse over the tidal turbine here because I don't remember what it gives me. Ah, that's oh well. Can't win them all. Organic's coming online in two turns. And lots of quests. Some of these are were there before, but yeah, the ice and conquest. I think at this point, I don't remember if one of the uh, the developers is sort of like asking me about the Marvel quest or whatnot, because I really should be prioritizing those a bit. I do know, spoiler alert, at some point I do complete one of the Marvel quests, so you can look forward to that. I may complete them both. I don't remember. Um, and yeah, then you've got these sort of static alien plant things that um, 
you can choose to destroy or not. I still, I think it still upsets the aliens if you destroy them. Um, but they are otherwise non-aggressive, other than the fact that they do expand, and you have to worry about the fact that they're gonna be in your way. Bum, 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 bum. Lots of alien life walking around the map. Agreement recommendation. Colonizing war. Hmm. Yeah, I do have a lot of points. I do like those pop-ups at the top. I think they're, um, they don't happen that frequently. And so you don't sort of block them out like noise, right? Like, um, there have been other games in the past that put up these sort of frequent pop-ups and reminders of things, but they're too frequent and they pop up for too many things that aren't that important. So you just learn to sort of ignore those completely. And right now it's feeling like it has a pretty good balance. It gives you a pop-up when you do something that changes your relationship, either the respect or the fear that you have with another faction, or it pops up to remind you that like you've just hit enough diplomatic um, capital to um, to do something with it, like you've hit a new breakpoint, so uh, you've got enough for a an agreement that you hadn't had access to before, for example, or when um, one of your other factions in here takes a trait that unlocks a new type of agreement possibility, and those are pretty important to know. I, I want I want that information because um, I don't know if the AI has chosen a trait, for example, so I want to be notified of that. And the other thing is that I do clearly tend to spend forget to spend things. Um, you know, in Civ, it's often faith, and here it's going to be the diplomatic capital, so getting those pop-ups is going to be pretty good. Looks like I'm probably having a chat with someone right about now. I tried to cut out all of these pauses, but apparently I did miss one. I'm hoping that it's not too terribly long. Um, oh, there we go. I'm starting to move again. Excellent. I wonder what I was talking about. I have no idea. There are a few reps in the uh, in the area. Again, I was at the 2K offices. Now, 2K is a publisher for Firaxis. They also, well, I was going to say 2K also owns Firaxis. It's not exactly accurate. It's I think it's that Take Two Games is is the big master company that owns both 2K and Firaxis. Um, but Firaxis is like parented to. Um, 2K or something of that nature, but uh, their offices are nowhere near one another. The, the Fraxis offices are somewhere like I think Baltimore, and of course 2K is in California. So I think they still uh, have a, a fair amount of independence, and that's probably a nice thing. Um, so yeah, there were some people there who were actually from Fraxis. There were some people there who were actually from 2K. Mix of developers, PR people, other types of uh, community organizers, and things like that. Uh, public transportation agreement. I think that's the one that gives you faster speed. And we just finished organics. And we discovered a new research pod, completed an expedition. Wow, what a busy turn. Yeah, biofactories. Ah, uh, hey, we have the uh, level four affinity as well, so that's perfect. Um, if we can find somewhere to build them. Yeah, I don't care about the mass digesters or launch complexes. I very, very rarely build them. The thorium reactors are pretty good, especially when you do complete the quest. They do give you a lot of money. And that really should work out pretty well here. It wouldn't surprise me if I grabbed the laboratory. Click. Nope. No, oh, looking around, considering some units. I think, like, I am very aware that my military is a bit on the weak side. I'm like, I don't know. And here we go. Look at this unit upgrade screen. Just so gorgeous. And you can check, you know, hey, what level do the, the next upgrades get? I mean, obviously, you could you could check these things before. But this is such a nicer screen. I love it so much. Love the filters. It's just a non-sucky interface to check those unit upgrades. And it really gives you a sense of how much extra stuff there is. Plus, I mean... There are legitimately a lot more units now that there are um, the um, the hybrid units. And so the old interface would have really been insufficient for the job. But honestly, it was kind of insufficient for the job in the first place. I wonder if I'll ever move that Manticore. I'm pretty sure the answer is no. That poor alien creature that I got out of a pod at some point, or an ex expedition, just sitting on an island. I mean, sure, it's giving me a little bit of vision. Uh, I'm pretty sure I could embark it across the sea at this point. Maybe not. Maybe the aliens don't get that ability. Actually, that's entirely possible. That guy might have been stuck there no matter what. Hmm. But I don't actually double check him, so I'll, I don't know if he's truly stuck or not. Got a cutter. Yeah, just looking around here. I'm like, oh, I hope that worm eats that explorer. That would be really, really nice. It's a cool looking shipwrecky thing over there. Actually, I think that is a undersea expedition. So maybe the expeditions were there. It was the, the resource pods that weren't. Aliens detected. Fajaran has grown. How's Fajaran growing? Is that my coastal city? I didn't think so. Oh, maybe it grew in size. Okay. I was thinking it got an extra border, but it must just have gotten an extra population. That makes a lot more sense. Here we go. This is, uh, that city is almost done, or it's almost done 
turning into a city. It's currently an outpost. And the other one as well. It'll be interesting to see exactly what happens to my health once both those cities pop. I suspect we will spend a little bit of turn in the negatives. But we are very rapidly closing in. Looks like we're maybe about 10 turns away to our next virtue, at which point we should have our happiness problems totally under control. You can see here I'm like thinking about maybe bombarding those aliens. Should I move my worker? I'm like, I think I'm safe? Question mark? I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But we are skipping to the next turn here. Alien Makara. Combat strength is at 26 or 28. Again, I'm uh, on my preview screen here, the way I'm doing the recordings. It's a little bit smaller, so some of those numbers are blending into one another. Still, that is a pretty potent little beast. Um, luckily, my cutter is relatively tough as well. I mean, it has less strength. It's only a 22, but it does mean that it's not able to one-shot me, which is what's really, really important there. do like the melee ships. I found them pretty easy to work with. Uh, the aliens are manageable. They're certainly problematic. Uh, but they are very, very manageable. Um, I don't think I build a, a, a submarine for quite some time. Because at this point, I think I'm like, yeah, again, I'm, I'm not necessarily making any aggressive moves. I'm working on expansion at this point. That is my goal. It's like, just get some new cities, get them growing. Um, I'm not feeling too threatened, especially I'm taking advantage of the fact that it is a lower difficulty and I'm a lot likely to get rushed, both because the AI is less aggressive on lower difficulties, but also because it's not going to have like the obscene production bonuses that it gets at the higher difficulties and therefore just have like a ludicrous number of units. But, I mean, any time that situation came up, I could really turn around and start developing some uh, some units pretty fast. I'm also taking advantage of the fact that I know that my cities have slightly higher defense um, because of my personal trait than other people might. So, I'm hoping that that will, that will shield me, give me a little bit of time to organize. I mean, it's not like I don't have any navy whatsoever. It's just, it is pretty distributed. On the other hand, like, if I'm not going to be attacking with my navy, it doesn't make as much sense to build a whole bunch of it. Um, I'm hoping that's a safe move. Is that a ripper? I think that is. I think those things are pretty weak, like a strength 5 or 6 or something like that. So, I mean, certainly threatening at first, but not as much later on. Let's see what happens right over here. Yeah, a Ripper. It actually did a decent amount of damage. I think it's maybe a little bit more powerful than I was uh, thinking about it. Um, Ar Arshia, Arcia, not sure how to pronounce her name, is uh, commending me for actually having a relatively large army. So there you go. I guess that's a, that's a sign of the difficulty, but also the fact that like I have expanded a bit. And I do have, like I said, I have a good number of ships. I've been using them, you know, putting them in straits, to try to block off alien motion, doing a lot of exploration. If I did bring all my ships together, I guess I actually would have a pretty good army. I guess the deceptive part is playing in a naval situation like this, it's a lot easier to, to roam around quite a bit. And I'm trying to be very aggressive with my exploration. Um, normally, when I play these games, I'm actually, I'm pretty bad at exploring. I don't tend to go very far. Um, but it would mean that all the units that I'd built, if they were just, you know, hovering around my core cities, that would be a pretty sizable army. I should be able to defend myself from just about anything. In fact, with that message popping up, I think at a certain point I start thinking, hmm... Maybe I should start to be aggressive. Might even be looking here at Freeland like, you know, it's on the coast. It's a capital. It's got to be pretty good. There you go. Another pop-up about my sizable army. And I, I think at this point, like, my my confidence is starting to get stoked. I'm like, oh, maybe I should try something. I mean, I've got level four in my affinity. And if I'm reading the bars correctly in the top left corner, I'm, like, virtually about to hit five, which means, like, anything else that gives me any... Um, affinity points should level me up. And since most of the technologies don't necessarily give you a full um, affinity level anymore, that's good. Yeah, you can see here, the sort by cost, it only sorts it in one direction. I'm like, oh, well, okay, I guess that's fine. Commercial lobby. It's like, there's so much good stuff. Look at how much extra health you can get. Um, which one am I getting here? Oh, yeah, something that might have been good to get earlier. It's hard because, and then I'm like, that, I think this is the first time that I truly properly notice the uh, maintenance cost. Or maybe I'm like, I'm still doing it. A few active agreements. Am I going to cancel that? Yeah. It's like, oh my God, that costs 25 per turn. I can't afford that. Crazy sauce. And I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, there's different things. Like, wow, that is uh, that is really very expensive. Um, I, I think I had noticed that there was a maintenance cost at this point. 
but I don't, I don't think I was aware that about the 25. I'm trying to save a few points here. I really like the idea of um, rushing the next virtue, which is what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to shave a turn or two off the next virtue because I am currently unhealthy, and I would like to remedy that as soon as possible. Of course, again, there's still plenty of buildings here that can give me a little bit of health, but, you know, I got other things to do. If I can get away with not doing it, oh, here we go, we're going to move a city. How exciting. And I think that's what's probably going to happen. I'll probably move my new cities a couple of times, grab a couple of key tiles, and then settle down to, like, actually just building buildings. Um, especially, like, the idea being, eventually my cities are probably going to end up in a final location, right? And I don't want to settle too far away from that, because presumably my final location is a good one and might have access to some important resources. So I don't want to start too far away. Um, and I also... And then once I get there, I want to sort of be done with my moves, right? Alien hive mine. Ooh, combat actions have agitated alien life. Don't, I think there's still green. I'm looking around here for an alien on the screen. I don't see one yet. I think they might still be green at this point, as opposed to getting to the next aggro level, like the next visible aggro level. But they're obviously starting to get kind of pissed. And that's going to become pretty obvious. Yeah, I can see some aliens now. They're still green. Because they go, what, yellow and then red, like based on their actual um, aggression. But... <laughs> Spoiler alert, even though I'm playing Harmony, I'm going to not be the friend of the aliens for most of the game here. And they're not going to be my friend. Oops. So I'm like, you know what, at a certain point, you're, get you're getting in my way, I've got a navy, I just want to clear some space. This is my space. Harmony or not, that's not the way it goes. Yeah, see, now I'm going to start to get bombarded. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, maybe I did upset them. It does look like I'm moving a bit of a fleet towards uh, Hutama over there, though. Dun, dun, dun. We got some more corals and things. I'm going to try to get out of here. I don't know if that guy can bombard me. Actually, that must be an amphibious unit, because that's the same unit that we saw in the ocean earlier, wasn't it? The Makara? I don't think I was uh, really paying attention to that. That's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Still not doing a good job doing my quest. I am, you know, still looking for resource pods and things, so that's good. Yeah, it looks like I'm moving a bit of a fleet towards uh, Paul Australia at this point. Starting to to feel to feel my power. Sea Dragon, there we go. Get a gunboat over there. Blow that up. Make some room, especially if we're going to be fighting in this area. A couple of gunboats and a melee ship. Yeah, I should be able to take that out pretty easily. And there it goes. I do like the way that all the tentacles kind of curl up when it dies. It's a nice little touch. The animations are really good here. Establish trade route. Nope. Yes. Then I not just click that button. Maybe I just cycle between units first to see what's what. Another gunboat. Yeah. And and that's the thing. Like it kept saying those mission those uh, those messages that I had a pretty big army. I'm like, oh, maybe I do have a big army. And yeah, you put this together and like, Christ, that's that's a lot of ships. You can really get some work done with this. Mm-hmm. And they've got a couple of levels of upgrade. I think both the gunboat. I think so. I think the gunboat is on the second level, or, you know, one upgrade, and the cutter, which is the melee one, definitely is. I can't remember. We're gonna have to look to see if there's a little sign. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, the gunboats are still there at the level one unit. Okay. But the cutters are level two, and, you know, that's pretty good. And there's enough of them here that um, I can probably smash face into the city a few times. Obviously, try to soften it up with um, with bombardment first. And uh, one of the issues here is that we, while we do have range attacks for the city, we don't have um, like an artillery type unit that specifically does a bunch of bonus damage to city, nor do we have anything that's a range three unit. So we're going to get bombarded back. Um, I don't remember. I think I, when I was looking at Paul Australia or uh, rather at, uh, what are their capital called? Oh, I can't see. It's just off the screen. Whatever their capital is. Um, I think I was paying attention to the combat strength and being like, yeah, it's not that high. Um, I think it's like higher than just the base. Like they may have built a defensive building in there, but it didn't feel like they had a ton. Freeland. Oh, and then I scroll way too fast. Notice that the uh, cities have decimal points for the combat strength. I'm pretty sure that's new. I don't think I'm I'm dreaming that. Pretty sure those details are, are new. I suspect that they may have already always had those values behind the scenes, and it's just that they're showing it to us, but I can't actually be sure. What are we going to go for? Robotics does give you some affinity. Mm, looks like yes. Okay. And I don't remember, I did load up the upgrade screen at some point. I think it was to see when the gunboat upgrade might be. 
Um, if it is at level five, that'll be very convenient because I'll get there in four turns. Trade vessel. Looks like I'm probably stopping to have a bit of a chat again. We are nearly, nearly. Oh, no, we're not quite there. Never mind. I'm just looking at the timer. I thought we were near the end of uh, this episode, but no, we've got a few more minutes to go. What are you doing? Well, you got to set your production for a couple of cities, that's for sure. I really do wish I was grabbing a little bit more. Well, no, okay. No, the, the laboratories are pretty good. I was going to say, but I wish I was grabbing more of the thorium reactors and tidal turbines. Having that money really makes a big difference. It's always bad when I don't have it. Yeah, go and heal up. Although, again, I cannot heal ground units in my naval cities in this build. So Freeland, uh, is that 39.4? So that's high-ish. Still feel pretty confident. Now, it is unfortunate. I've been pretty good friends with Paul Australia most of the game. Um, I've been enjoying that deal that gives me the extra plus three trade routes in my capital uh, because we do have an alliance. One of the things here is you'll see going from an alliance to going to war, I mean, other than probably costing me respect with everyone, um, is not too bad. They are talking about adding a diplomatic capital to... Um, relationship changes. So going from sanction to cooperative to allied or, or to go to war, for example, um, which, you know, may or may not make the final game. We have no idea. But um, I think that it would be a very good idea if it costs quite a lot of diplomatic capital to go from allied to war. Right? Because that, that to me makes a lot of sense. It should be quite pricey to do that sort of thing. Um, because it's not, and not just from an international point of view, but internally to your own people. I mean, you're trying to justify war with someone who you've been allied with. Uh, there should be something that represents that kind of cost. And I think that would be totally fine. We'll use a little diplo mana, a little earth mana to do that. So we are currently losing um, diplomatic points, but we do have that, uh, that discount to the next policy, which is what I'm holding on to it for. It's going to give me the, the next policy, I think, a little bit sooner. I don't think I'm wrong about that. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, see, go explore those brains. There we go. And the buildings. Get that stuff done. Maybe that's what the last pause was. Maybe they were they were asking me about if I'd looked into the Marvel stuff yet. And I was like, mm, I'm not sure. I got some quests. And, like, and they're like, yeah, that's a really good quest. You should probably go and finish that. Oh, oh okay. Um, some fence. I like all the aquatic um, basic resources. I think they look cool. They're very colorful. They stand out. I, I like the sense of depth that you've got. I think, I don't know, like, you know, how they necessarily went about this map design, but it looks awesome. Like, just great. I'm probably going to talk about that in every one of my videos. Especially considering I found most of the the ground in Beyond Earth to be relatively bland. You know, very bluish, purplish, greenish, all sort of blends together, especially the miasma, um, which I don't know if you've noticed, but it's a hell of a lot more noticeable here in Rising Tide. The, mi the miasma really stands out, which is good because I found it relatively difficult to see in Beyond Earth. Um, and I'm not I'm not colorblind. I mean, sometimes I'm just blind in general, it feels like. Um, but I'm not, I don't think I'm particularly colorblind. And yet I had an exceptionally hard time identifying miasma quite frequently. And now it pops really, really well. And I think the new biomes are going to help that as well. Um, I think the just the, the color scheme that's sort of implied by the biome, there we go, investigate the alien structure, is going to have a pretty big impact on the visibility. And in the sea, it's really big. That actually might be one of the reasons I'll enjoy playing in the sea the most. So there we go. I finally investigated a brain and an alien structure. Now, I think I'd investigated one of each already. Um, because I'm basing that on the fact that I didn't get a pop-up here for like quest development. So I think I'd investigated one of each already. And the next step is to investigate two more. So basically you have to investigate three, but they do it in steps so that they can tell you more story. Um, and then once you finish that, then you'll actually get credit for the Marvel. But we are now actually coming to the end of the episode. And it feels like the next time I suspect we will be declaring war on Paul Australia. You don't want to miss it. Make sure to stay tuned in that. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.